Back in April when I had just signed the lease for the train car, I went over one day just to put a few things that I had bought into the new place. Some old theater seats from a 1930s theater that just used to be here in town. It was called the Capitol Theater. It was torn down back in the 90s, I think it was. And I also had a salon chair that I had just bought from someone on the Facebook marketplace. When I was outside, I saw two people that were coming out of the caboose train car, and they were moving some large canvas paintings into the place. One of the guys was running a business that's in the caboose train car called Local Motion, and they put on events inside of the place. He actually gave me a tour of the place, and the train was all decked out and looks fantastic. And he had a lot of pointers of things that I could do with the one that I had, but as I've said previously, the one that I have really needs a lot of work. I'm Tom Ray, and this is American Bandito. <laughs> The other person that was outside that caboose train car was one of the artists that was going to be showing his work there on a gallery night. Hello there, I'm Tim Togstead. I'm a visual artist. After meeting him, I asked him if he would be interested in coming to talk with me on the show. And then we set up a time a few weeks later where we could do that. I had him meet me again in my train car to record this episode. By this time, we had already hired a contractor, the floors were all torn up, and the old paint job was in the process of being scraped off of the walls and the ceiling. But we walked over there and sat in the two chairs that I had bought when we had met. As we set up, Tim set up some of his work around me. He said that he brought it so he could remember to stay focused on what he was there to talk about because he was worried that he might wander off topic, which I thought was pretty funny because I have a tendency to do that as well. So tell me how you ended up doing that show right next door, first of all. It, it was a painting I sold to my good friend, Scott Brandt, who's bought a lot of paintings over the years. And he had it in his office, and he's the landlord of Quality CBD. Where they're located now. And Tony saw this painting and said, I'll rent from you. I don't know if he's totally serious. I'll rent from you if I get this painting. So he got the painting. He loves it. It's going to stay up in his uh, business. It took three months for me to get around to doing it because we had a really rough year last year. He looked at the website. I said, Tony, you can look at the paintings. If they're for sale, you can have them in your place. Two days later, he sent me an email. He picked out these big canvases that were in storage. And three days later, they're up in his place. Then Persona and Brian, who have a Madison... Uh, local motive saw the work at quality cbd they said tim would you be interested in displaying a gallery night and i said sure what you know and it's just a few days so i loaded up and shuffled around and it was a fair bit of shuffling because i had uh currently a show at uh, the lakeview library and then i had stuff at soul escape so there was a moment where i actually had artwork at four places in Madison, which was uh, pretty exciting. You said they wanted to rent from you, so do you rent out your painting? No, no, no. That, that, was, a, that was a misstatement. But I do want to say this, that with my art, which is unusual, but, you know, they're starting to get pretty expensive. And if someone wants to um, buy a painting and live with it, and at some point, if they want to return it, and get in something else for right. similar or lesser or more value, they can do that. Because okay. because people change, you know. You 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 might downsize, and you bought a big canvas, and I just I, I figured that's just a nice option. No one's taken me up on it yet, but I just like to throw that out there. But no, they uh, displayed my art at their uh, train car, and uh, it was a nice little show. So people have been looking me and Tony. So. Just by one painting, having it in a business, it's just expanded over the last month and a half. You know, it's been just great. Have you always lived in Madison? I am a big time townie. Yeah. The Norwegian side on both sides of the family goes way back. Five generations on my mom's side, four on my dad, and then the German side is uh, four from Portage, and then the Irish is three, so... My wife likes to say I uh, grew out of the ground. On your website, it shows that you do multimedia stuff. And, I, you know, there's paintings, there's sculptures. And then also you've brought a piece of sculpture with you right here yep. that's wood sculpture. But that's also kind of like what you do for business. So let's start with what it is you do business-wise and then go into how you went to school for art, which was 
a bachelor in science for art? I know. I'm, I'm honest. I, I got to tell the truth. It was to avoid uh, foreign language. Yeah. So, uh, yes, I did do that. So I didn't have to uh, take a foreign language, which is a kind of a cop out. When I was in school, I mainly focused on sculpture. I love the foundry work. I love wood, did a little bit of metal. And because I was in art school, I, you know, I definitely took some painting classes and drawing classes. But I, my vision was to go to grad school and focus on uh, sculpture. And then I got a job at a sign company and pretty much became the lead production guy there pretty quickly. And we uh, did a lot of uh, dimensional stuff, themed signs, okay. some sculpture. It's been a fun, fun job. You know, I, it's hands-on and it's creating every day. It's pretty darn interesting. I bring that production aspect to my uh, artwork too. How so? Sometimes when you do art, you get a little bit, I, I just see things not getting finished and just move things through the process. I feel like I can do that pretty well. Get them to the finish point with frame, the wires, and just get it ready to go. The guys next door, uh, Brian and Persona, were uh, pretty impressed with the fact that I had everything all set up. And they were like, oh, I love your wiring and framing it's all so ready to go yeah. so sometimes i try not to have loose ends. that's one of the things i noticed when i was looking at your stuff because one of the comments you put with some of your work is that the price can change if they want different framing or matting or stuff like that and i'm Absolutely. looking and then that's when i saw you did the signs and i'm like oh and he's a sculptor this all makes sense now yeah it's a lot of people i mean i can't tell you i had a show at the library like i mentioned a few minutes ago and i had several people actually it's a little embarrassing, but they commented on my framing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually going to be doing a little bit of a, a frame uh, uh, teaching course. Really? A little bit, just kind of impromptu, some artists I've met. It's actually a really good idea. They're like, how do you do this? And it's even painting sometimes, I feel like I'm almost throwing my frames in extra. I don't really price them. Like, I've, I feel like I need to. Maybe I will change it. Maybe I'm going to start to break it apart where it's the, the painting. And if you want to get the frame, you get that. I mentioned before that Tim had a few of the pieces that he made with him when we spoke. One was a wood sculpture, and the other was a small painting that he had brought with. And they were both just in a bag that he had. But I saw some of the other pieces in the gallery exhibition that he had in the caboose car and on his website. And those were much larger pieces that he makes. You've mentioned that you sold them locally, but you have a website. Do you ever sell any of them online or do you find that you get a lot of people reaching out to you or wanting to find out more about what you do because of the website you have? A little bit, but how do you promote it? How do you get out there? I feel the need to really reach out and I'd like to network with people to figure out how to branch out beyond the city because I feel Madison is getting really dynamic right now. There's a lot of interest. I've met a lot of people. Just the fact that I have a place to show my art right now for yeah. the next X number of years, I'm just excited and it's a... Oh, that long? Yeah. I, I guess I didn't realize that's how long Yeah, it's be. fantastic. Uh, Tony wants me to be kind of the featured artist behind the counter and it's a really big space and we're kind of tweaking the lighting right now, and it's just, it's pretty exciting. Is that the CBD place? or? Yep, and it's a very dynamic place right now. There's a lot of artwork going on. Uh, Casey Zander is kind of the coordinator, and she's constantly rotating artists. So oh. reach out to her if you're an artist in the local area. And a lot of shows, performances music they do uh painting workshops at a cbd store i didn't know that it's, oh. it's a lot of fun and i've met some fascinating people there uh, river who does projections that are just wild these projections that are incorporated into paintings it's fascinating and it's just a really interesting group of people over there how did you end up reaching out to people locally i just network talk to people hannah over at uh soul escapes she's a friend of mine kind okay. of a mutual friend and she just likes my art so oh, cool. i just keep my art there all the time i'm actually looking for another artist there to kind of mix things up a little bit the library we just walked in there one day and the librarian just liked the art so i need to do that as an artist i really feel that's some of our weak 
we, you know, producing is one thing, and then yeah. there's the whole other aspect of art, getting it out there, meeting people, and doing what I'm doing today, and just talking about art. It's it's important. It's important to do. It's a it's a good percentage of the the process. And I'm going to give uh, my wife Sarah uh, a little credit right now, because there was a period in my life where I. Uh, delved into amateur bike racing so <laughs> yeah so i so i got away from art i spent it was like a half-time job and then i had a, sh a really big show in 99 and then it went all the way to 2009 before i had another show there were a lot of a lot of pieces a lot of untitled pieces and so get titles on the work and then sarah went into my uh, portfolio of uh work on paper buckled down and got a lot of stuff framed which was huge yeah and you know that was kind of a spark for me too because it was like wow that's a good so a lot of those drawings became paintings they were like a first step towards a painting in fact this sense. sculpture right here was a little sketch mm -hmm. and then i sculpted it and then i painted it so i have things i generate ideas from older ideas that i've had and it was a really big show. It was uh, out at uh, Tulula's when it was still a restaurant out there hmm. off of 51 and Cottage Grove Road and almost had 100 pieces and we had a band. 100 pieces? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. It was, it, was a, it was a big show. We took up the whole restaurant. I, I would imagine. Yes. And they were like, are you sure you want the whole restaurant? It's like, yes, let's do it. We really turned into a big event and generated a lot of interest since then, I've just like keep going out, and people saw that show and were interested in my art. So I'm trying to get it out there. I'm I'm tr I'm going to make an effort this year to get something in Milwaukee, Chicago, or Minneapolis because I'd like to branch out. There's um some shows I'm going to enter, and I might just go down and uh, hit the galleries too and see if I can get some stuff because I have a lot of work right now. I feel it's time. It sounds like you're good at doing the absolute cold walk up, like the walk up and introduce yourself and get in the door that way for sure. Like, or at least personally, that's what it sounds like to me. Like you got more guts than I do at doing it is what I'm saying is it sounds like you've walked into several places. I made a stab at it in the eighties after I got done with school and it was weak with the presentation, but now I have a huge body of work and I have more confidence. And I think my, my work is, uh, pretty pretty interesting and it's it, a lot of people like it but i do a lot of a lot of different styles and sometimes i'll intentionally uh try to tone my palette down and some of those are very i found very successful i'm happy with what i do sometimes i'll look at something and just go wow that did turn out really i'm pretty <laughs> happy with it so i love the process too i just love i mean just Everybody should do it personally. I, I think it'd be, it's so good for your head to yeah. work it through. I think everybody does in little ways. It's just like with playing music. Everybody knows at least one song on the piano or something, like no matter how simple it is. And everybody has something that they draw. There's always one thing that everybody can draw. And when they're on the phone or they're talking or they're oh, sitting absolutely. there, they'll doodle it. Absolutely. And then they just need confidence and keep at it and the joy of doing it is just i just i just love it and then if you can get it out there and other people can see it and appreciate it and every once in a while someone will buy it i've got a a, a family up in a portage who uh he's a dentist and my goodness i think he's close to a dozen paintings hmm. that he's purchased from me Okay. Yeah, it's oh. just it's and some really, some really pretty good ones. A couple of them, I, <laughs> couple of them I didn't want to let go, but it's you know that's the more mature you get, I think it's easier to let them go. Yeah. Because you just, what are you going to do? With all the work that Tim mentioned, he told me that there is even more that he didn't finish or use or hasn't even shown. And recently he decided he wanted to do something with them because there's no reason to hang on to this stuff. I have a lot of older canvases that are not on the website because I don't, I just don't feel they're developed enough. They were, you know, kind of early studies and I've experienced a lot of, um, let death and loss with people surrounding me lately. And one was a, a good artist friend, uh, Jimmy Reinke. And it's, 
as an artist, I'm just going to give this out there to other artists is let your stuff go, move it through, because someday you won't be around. And the last thing you probably want is it to go into a dumpster. So let it go. When you say let it go, you mean like give it to people? If people sell it, get it, you know, promote it, because at a certain point, it becomes a burden. Because I, I was blown away at how much art Jimmy had, and we had a, a art show for him, and it turned out pretty good. But in some ways, I'll be honest with you, it was kind of a fire sale. Yeah. We let things go a little cheaper, but you know, at least they found a good home, most right. of them. I did end up with all his big canvases. Mm -hmm. So now I have them, and there's one in particular that he did not finish. And while he was in hospice, he asked my friend Barbara and me if we had finished it. So that's on my plate to finish this canvas. And we're hoping to, uh, to have it shown uh, next gallery night, October 4th, Friday. So that'll be at Quality CBD. And we're going to be having a little bit of a benefit then too. There's got to be so many mixed emotions in that, like the yeah. honor of being asked, but then also just working on it has to be very difficult. That initial... What am I going to do with it? Because I want to yeah. keep the integrity of what he did, but he specifically, second to the last time I saw him, he straight up looked me in the eyes and asked me to do it. So I, yeah. have, to, I have to honor that. And related to that, this is kind of a weird segue. <laughs> okay. But I, this is where I was going with that, I'm not afraid to rework some of my older canvases. Because w w what's going to happen to them? You know, eventually, are they just going to be in the dumpster? Because I don't think they're really worthy of display. I, you know, I'm not thinking I'm going to be so famous. And even if I was ever became famous, do I want people to really even see these? Mm -hmm. I am going to document them in their earlier state, but I'm going to amp them up because I think I'm more experienced with my palette. And in fact, when I get done today, I'm going to head over to Mill Street and pick up a painting that is, oh my goodness. I mean, it's embarrassing to say, but it's probably 35 years old. Come on. Yes. And it's been in this house for probably 20 years, up in the stairwell. And it's probably six six by eight feet. It's a big canvas. I paint big sometimes. Uh -huh. And it's it's been in the sun. It's faded. Why has it been there? I was a roommate of theirs for a little oh, bit, okay. briefly. Right. Okay. And, you know... Sometimes those big things are hard to move around. <laughs> yeah. and I'm going to take it and I'm going to redo it because now I have a place to amp it up, flip it around a little bit, make some changes. Uh -huh. I'll let you see. You know, maybe maybe I'll even when I display it, I'll do a uh, before photograph next to it. Just it'd be neat. I just thought of that yeah. just now because yeah, that'd, that'd be kind of fun. When Tim does do cold introductions at galleries or walks into a place and decides to approach the person running the place, how does he present himself? I wanted to know, how does he pitch what he does? Before we talked about you walking in, doing a cold walk-in, and you're not necessarily going to go, here's one of my six by eight paintings, I just happen to have it with me. How do you present it to people and actually sell it to them to get it to go into a gallery? You know, someone, some, sometimes it's a little surreal as abstract expressionists. I do a little bit of representational. So I do a, a large variety. I've had a couple just pure abstract paintings that I think hit it out of the park. I love, right now what I'm working on is spatial depth. I like to really create a nice atmosphere, a background atmosphere, and then put something in the foreground and create some nice depth. So I, I, I feel that is, um, it creates a beauty to the canvas. And I'm working on a couple kind of interesting uh, experimental canvases right now. It was early days of finger painting. So when you're just a kid, and it's just an early memory for me, it's just that finger painting where the paint would just layer and layer and layer, and, and you create this depth with the paint layering over each other. And I did a black with a little gray, real thick, and I had a friend come over, and he goes, oh my God, is this cool? I was going to put something on top of it. And so all of a sudden, I'm in this position where it's like, is this a done canvas? <laughs> <laughs> and I think I'm going to just say to heck with it. I'm going to put a, a large black frame on it and uh, go with it. Another thing I'm trying to do lately, too, is actually trick the eye and do a canvas that is blurry. So the image is 
actually blurring and your eyes almost feel like there's something not quite right. And I've had a couple that have been pretty successful because if you overlap objects close enough, your eyes struggle and they start to cross a little bit mm -hmm. and then you create this three-dimensional jumping depth. How did you discover doing that process? Well, have you ever sat down and, and looked at uh, the octagons on like a bathroom floor? Yeah. And then your eyes come across and they get to that point where you're, yeah, and then all of a sudden it jumps. Yeah. So I'm trying to do that on a canvas and I've done it a couple times and you need the patience though to look at it long enough and let your eyes relax to do that. How do you ship the stuff that you have. You said you wanted to do galleries in different places. You're not going to just throw it in the back of a car and like pile them up on top of each other. That is a great question. In fact, I've been thinking about that. I, I bought a Dodge van and I've got a angle board on it because I've been moving a lot of art around. So I've got the sizes down and a lot of my canvases are six by why I did this, you know, four, two, four, three. And the inside of the is four. So I angled it and nuts and bolts. And then at work, I do have a flatbed. I got a story for you. So I'm going to do a segue here. All right. So I did sell four canvases to uh, a friend, a kind of old friend. I was, he saw the website and he bought four canvases in uh, Colorado. So we drove them out in November and I loaded them up in the van and drove them out. Because at that point, it would be so labor intensive and you'd be worried so i'd rather deliver uh -huh. i'll be honest with you wow it, right. you know kind of combine it with a little trip i actually like that and one thing bit me in the butt though i had taken and it was a really old painting and it was from a slide so i took all the slides and turned them into jpeg for the website it was a lot brighter so mm -hmm. i was like oh boy and he got it and he's like oh, it's a lot darker than and it's like Chris, you don't have to buy it. It's darker. It is. He bought a couple others. It was, you know, it was okay. really. In fact, he bought one that was a very interesting story. It was called, uh, I call it Kimmer's Cave. A friend of mine bought it years and years ago. And then Kim passed away. And his family did not want it. So I cleaned it up, restretched it. And then I uh, changed it and actually put him into the painting and added some more elements and then called it uh, Kimmer's Cave. That one actually caught my eye when I was looking through your stuff. That's Good. really cool. Good. When I meet people to talk on the show, it's, it's so conversational that I feel we learn a lot about each other. Sometimes they ask my opinion while we talk about stuff. Tom, I'm going to ask you a question now. Okay, ask me. So what do you think about Madison? Is it just, I feel like the whole art scene in Madison is getting a little more dynamic right now. I very much agree. And I only started pursuing the art scene in Madison again in 2017. So to me, everything has been like, I turn one corner, I turn the next and I meet someone new. Yeah. So to me, all of it's been new. I, I've been out of the scene since at least the early 2000s. So yes, I'm going to say yes. And then the other thing too is there are definitely a lot more places that are open to it. My main thing was I was a musician and everybody keeps telling me that it used to be so much better to play shows here in Madison. And it's like the more people I meet, it's like, no, it's just that people that have been around here for a long time are looking at the places that used to be. And everybody else in the meantime is doing all these shows and having all the success. And they're like, you see local musicians or artists online and it's like, they're doing a showing here and almost everybody I know goes, where's that? And it's like, it's this place. Just like now you mentioned the CBD thing. I had no idea that they did multi-gallery and different types of displays there whatsoever. And now I know. And that's because of talking to people. And I think that's that it is dynamic. And that's the beauty of doing this is like, maybe I can help them find out. Yeah. So, so yeah, no, I do think it's getting dynamic. And there's a lot of young folks who are just really interested in getting their art out there too. It's kind of nice because they'll talk to me and they'll, they'll ask me about technique and different things and it, it's, it feels good. I really enjoy it. I really enjoy doing that. Have you ever thought in the other sense, so while they're doing that, they probably know a lot more about online promotion. And before oh. you said you don't know how to online promote, have you ever thought about show me how to promote this or help me promote this online or yeah. do stuff? Yeah, that it's huge. It's huge. Like I said earlier, it's the whole getting your art out there and not, you know, it's just producing it. Cause I did that for years and years and years would just produce and not even worry about getting it out there. Now I'm, you know, 
let's do it. Like you said, you have stuff sitting around. There's no reason. Somebody might like it. Absolutely. You know, how big is the fishbowl? Mm -hmm. You know, Madison is only so big and it's a, it's a big world out there and getting eyeballs mm -hmm. to what you're doing is important. One sort of not even metaphor, but comparison I could make is think of thrift stores. When you go to thrift stores, you could look at it and be like, look at all this junk. And somebody else comes in and goes, oh my God, my child would love these shoes. And it's like, well, they meant nothing to the other person that came in because they don't have a child. Yep. Or you go in and somebody goes, wow, there's this weird logo from like the 1970s that nobody knew was a weird logo from the 1970s on a shirt or some sort of toy that there's enough of it there where you can look at it and it means something to someone somewhere. So, and that's the way with art. And that's the way I see it when you're talking about all the pieces that you have that you should just let go. If you're still alive and you're still doing it, get it out there and find a home for it because there's probably a good home for your art and people will appreciate it. You can learn more about Tim and see his work at timtogstad.com. If you're enjoying this podcast, head on over to my site, americanbandito.com slash subscribe, where you can sign up for the mailing list and find all the other links to things that I'm on. Or if you just want to ask me a question or would like to contact me, that's AmericanBandito.com slash subscribe. The music for this show is by my band Lorenzo's Music. Thanks for listening, and until the next episode, so long. <laughs>